Okay, these two questions don't sound like they're connected, but they are. Uh, so Zach Harold says, I really enjoyed your book. Did putting your creative process down on paper illuminate anything you hadn't realized before? Yes, it really did. Um, and then this other question is from Colton McCraney. Uh, what positions in film are the most hands-on when it comes to making? After 10 years in the industry, I've finally had the opportunity to work in effects. Um, you make everything for use on camera. It's been everything I've dreamt of and more. But to my surprise, after six years of working in props, I was rarely ever given the chance to make a custom prop for a show. Um, usually losing out to time constraints, lack of manpower, and outsourcing. Has this always been the case? In both of these cases, okay, so to answer the, the first question first, did putting my creative process down on paper illuminate anything? Yeah, it illuminated how important community is. And by that I mean the process of explaining how I work, um, which required me to really investigate not just the first level of how I work, but why I do things the way I do, uh, and what that gives me, that is a really lovely practice. And it felt very similar. It felt like a boiled down version of what happens whenever I meet another great craftsman. Uh, I recently met and became friends with Gary Staub, um, a master uh, sculptor of dinosaurs and creatures from the past, a taxidermist par excellence, uh, and a lovely human being. And Gary and I just started like talking, talking, talking. We're still talking. We're texting. I'm going to see him in a couple of weeks uh, when I go to Kansas City. And that type of conversation that happens when two people who work in fields that overlap is is a really important conversation because it it takes your mind and the stuff that you do to solve the problems you solve in the cave and you start to compare notes with somebody else and all these other connections start to get made. So the book was like a very focused version of that in order to pump out, I think, 85 to 100,000 words for that book. That required me to spend so much time, again, boiling through my process. But that's also the same kind of thing that happens in conversation with other makers. And so, Colton McCraney, you're asking about, like, where in the film industry is the chance to make custom props? And the answer isn't me pointing somewhere. It's about the people you know and what they know about your skills. Um, because if you get known for solving these kinds of problems, then the supervisors who hire people to solve those kinds of problems will find you. Well, how do they find you? They find you because you've been talking about it. And I love pointing this out. One of the most important things you can do as a maker who wants to work in the field in which you are making is you've got to point to stuff that you're interested in, ask about it. You've got to point to stuff you've made and you've got to talk about it and you've got to share this with other makers. And the more you do that, the more those makers go and spread the word about you just as you spread the word about other makers. I'm sure you've met like great people who make this thing that you don't know how to make and you're astounded by it. So you talk about it. Um, that may lead someone you're talking to to hire that person. So it, it goes back, it goes back around to it's not what you know. Well, it is what you know, but it's also who you know and who you've been talking to. And I know. We're not all extroverts. I'm not even a complete extrovert. I'm an extrovert who needs a lot of downtime to recover from being extroverted. Um, and it can be tough to talk about yourself and to talk about the work that you're doing. Uh, and in that regard, I wouldn't say go and just keep on like talking to people, but find places. It's important to find people that you do feel safe to talk to. <clears throat> My wife is a, a, a marriage and family therapist, and she has a cohort of people that she went through school with and friends that meet every week to talk about, to talk about their work, to talk about the business of their work and the philosophy of their work. And I see how much she gets out of that collaboration. And it is really beautiful to the degree where I feel like I want a structured version of that. I want a set of model makers or uh, makers that I get on Zoom with every couple of weeks. I haven't done it yet, but, but like, you know, we all need a kind of church, right? To redound to, to talk about the things that are important to us. 
I, I, I know that was a rambling answer to two questions that don't really have a connection, except the community of talking about what we do. It is, you know, we are, we are explorers. Uh, human beings are explorers. We are problem solvers. Um, and we are storytellers. And sharing our stories with others and having them share their stories with us is one of my favorite ways to widen the world. Um, it is also, uh, sharing our stories with each other is totally a toxic environment for bigotry, uh, for prejudice. Uh, when we hear each other's stories, we open up to each other's experiences and we open up to our own. Um, I don't think there's any more like important activity that humans can do. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects, questions. You get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.